hello, hello. I am super excited today to take the topic effective budding house administration. And who am I? Why should you listen to me? I am Nancy Ekpaizu. I am the convener of the Facebook group Educational Administration Network with almost 12,000 members from various countries around the world. I'm also the author of the trending book, Dear Educator, which is currently available on Amazon in Kindle um, version. And I've been a school administrator in four reputable schools in Nigeria across the geographical zones. And um, I've actually, um, in the group where, the, where I'm the administrator, they are the Educational Administration Network, I've had the privilege of meeting a lot of school owners and interacting with them. And in the course of all this, I got to know that there's a huge level of improvement we need to bring in in the administration of our boarding house. Oh, please introduce yourself in the comments if you are just joining. I can see people are joining. I had to stop the broadcast and then redo. I just deleted it to start all over again because it didn't go quite well. So please let others know and let everybody just join in right away. Thank you so much. It's actually my first YouTube um, broadcast. Usually I do my um, live webinars on Facebook and that has been fine, but we want to move in now to YouTube. Okay, so the topic is, don't forget, the topic is effective boarding house administration. And I'm your hostess today. I'm Nancy Ekpaizu. I've been a school administrator, like I said, in four reputable schools. And I've interacted with quite a number of school owners. And I think that there's a huge need for us to step our game when it comes to boarding house administration. And so I'm doing this to address this issue. There'll be several other broadcasts on this matter. And I hope to do a few other posts as well on my across my social media handles. Okay, so the first thing we need to know, why do parents bring their children to the boarding house? Why don't they leave them at home and drive them to school every day? There are several reasons for that. The first is that it's convenient. It saves the parents um, the trouble of having to um, drop children every day, drop their children in the morning and pick them up at the close of work. And another thing is that it helps also for the children to stay focused. The time spent commuting or you know, in the traffic, for example, if you're in a city like Lagos, you will know it's really tough moving around. And so parents think that is a convenient way to leave the children in the school to concentrate on their studies. Okay, less distractions. Even parents, um, aunties and, and uncles and cousins visiting at home will not be uh, available at the school. They will not readily be, have access to these children at school. And so they can focus on their on what they have come to school to do, which is the academics. So it is generally believed that children in the boarding houses have less distractions to deal with than those who are in the house. Another thing is that um, parents may be having mar mar marital issues and they could decide that, okay, um, we're just here struggling who's gonna be in custody of the children. Why don't you place them in the boarding house? I've had to deal with such cases, even as a school administrator. Okay, so another thing is that it helps, um, they are, they, it helps the children to be disciplined. That's what is generally believed. Because they are, they, there's a schedule, there's a routine of activities that children are meant to undergo in the boarding house that helps to build discipline in them. Okay, in the house, the parents may be too busy and they may not have time to really put a lot of all these structures in place. At least that's the reality, not that that's what should be, but that's the reality we have found ourselves in. And so it's, um, it's important that we know why parents bring their children in the first place. And then what is a boarding house? A boarding house is simply a facility that enables children to stay through the term instead of having to go home. And their accommodation is provided, lodging, accommodation, um, of course, care. So we have all the people we call the house parents. That's usually the boarding house master and the matron and a few other residential staff members who live with them. And all these people have to know their responsibilities. It is not enough to build beautiful hostels. There must be structure in the, the organization of the boarding hostel, in the operations. And so I have found that there's a need for us to put 
um, um, policies and procedures in place for the operations of our boarding houses, especially in our, in our country. Okay, and I'm sure that applies to a lot of other West African countries around. Okay, so basically, there must be policies and procedures for the operations of boarding houses. So the boarding house, have, they must have a procedure, the processes must start right from the time the child is admitted into the boarding house. There has to be proper record keeping. They have to understand why in the body, they are in the boarding house. All the information required for you to be able to sustain a child properly in the boarding house must be provided by the parents, such as their medical history, uh, medical records, Okay, you don't just bring in a child and then you find out later that they have sickle cell anemia or they are asthmatic or that they have certain ailments that, you know, are difficult to cope with. That will really put your school in a very bad light if things go wrong. And so from the onset, you have to get it right with the parents and be very strict about your admission procedures. Make sure all the documentations are kept properly and parents sign all the necessary forms that need to be done in your school. Very important. Okay, so now let's look at the, the various policies that you need to have in the boarding house. You must have your admission policy. What is the minimum age for a child to be admitted into your school's boarding house? Do you just allow any child in, even if the child is two years old, and to come and live with the others who are teenagers. Is there a minimum age? I've worked in a school that was the boarding house was strictly for those in the secondary, and only those from above 10 years were admitted into the boarding house. I've also worked in a school that made provision for those in the elementary school. And so our boarding house had facilities for the elementary pupils and facilities also for the, for the um, secondary school children, the students. And this worked beautifully because for the for the elementary kids, we had nannies who were able to take care of them. And so if you do know that you do not have the facility to take care of the younger ones, just leave them out of your boarding system. Do not bring them in to be very um, to in a very inconveniencing um, um, facility that is not conducive for their for their stay. OK. Then you must have you must ensure that things are in place for medicals and health. Very important. A lot of schools subscribe to an HMO, which is a health management organization. Okay, there are several of them to choose from. Okay, I've dealt with a few um, uh, HMOs in the course of my being a school administrator. So you find out which one works for you. So that makes the uh, medical attention for the children um, to be readily accessible because normally such HMOs will have a nearby hospital where the children can go to, okay? But that does not mean you should not have your, your sick, um, your nurse in the, in the school. So you must have a nurse, and ideally you should have a driver for emergencies because you never can tell when there can be any problem. I was talking to someone who works in a school and he said their school does not have anybody living with the children in the hostel. And I was like, what? Is that really possible? Children must be taken care of. They must have living residential, um, a matron, a matron, a housemaster, and other people who work with them, depending on the size of the school. Some schools have the laundry people coming to um, take care of the clothes, but I always advise that it's, um, it's fine to have the children do um, you know, chores such as even washing their own. They should be responsible enough to wash their undies and their stockings and learn some little things from the boarding house. So that is it. So you must have medical records of the children. You must have access to a medical facility. In addition, you must have, a, you must be a nurse in your school, okay, who is readily available for them. And in addition, your staff members in the boarding house should be trained on first aid procedures. They should know first aid. They should be able to handle little emergencies. And they should be very conscious about safety of the children. The boarding house should be such that there is safety and security is another issue also to look at. Okay, so those are things you need to do. So make sure you have the health records of the children. Don't say, oh, we didn't know your child was a single seller. You should know from the get go. As they get into your boarding house, you must know their medical history before they are allowed in, okay?
Okay, so those are some of the things. Then in addition, you should include some, um, there should be security. No parent wants to hear that their child was picked away from the school uh, because there were no uh, security measures put in place. And safety is always very, is very important. There should be also be child protection policy, very important. Every school must have that, whether it is boarding or whether it is day. There must be um, um, there must be um, policies for child protection. All the staff members must understand what child protection is and be able to adhere to the policies. And all this must be understood by the parents as well. Very important. You should have guidelines when the children should be picked from the boarding house and when they'll be dropped. So no parent just walks in and says, I want to pick my child or send just anybody. There must be procedures for all of this in your boarding house. Okay, so I intended for this video to be just about 15 minutes because it's my first YouTube broadcast. I'm actually enjoying it, even though there was a little hitch with the first attempt. Okay, so those are some of the things you need to know. So, and there should be induction of the children. As they're coming into the boarding house, they must sign for behavior, their behavior. There must be something put in place for behavior management. So when the children come into the boarding house, they know what is expected of them. So all the expectations for their behavior must be discussed at the induction of the students. So you have induction for students, and then you also have the induction for the boarding house team. So all of these people must know what and what is expected of them. I'm sure I'm going to do a lot, a few other broadcasts on this boarding house issue, but today is just a general introduction. Gradually, I'll begin to take on some other ones, you know, one by one, um, just like that, until we get it, um, you know, right. But please know that what my book is on the way is that it addresses boarding house issues and I'll be really glad to launch it next year. And I'm sure that you'll be able to pick your copy. Um, remember that my book, Dear Educator, is available um, on now on Amazon. Please get a copy if you haven't got one yet. Uh, yeah, Dear Educator, that's it. Please make sure you get your copy. Make sure that everybody on your team has a copy as well. I've actually seen people who are not even educators buying copies for... Um, whether they are te the children's teachers or even for themselves. Some people who are just um, starting out have told me that the tips here are not just for teachers, that they have found them very useful for themselves in even other professions, okay? So this book is a must for every educator. It's available on Roving Heights online bookstore. It is available on Amazon. It is also available at Warital Book Place very, very um, affordable. And it's available in several cities across Nigeria. In, um, it's available in um, Calabar, Uyo, um, Kaduna, in Lorin, Benin City, Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt. So get your copy or send me an inbox and I'll really be glad to attend to you. Thank you so much. This is already almost 13 and a half minutes, and it's been my pleasure. I hope you've been able to get a few things from here. Please, when you listen to this or watch it, kindly type the tips that have, that have done. Yeah, you've been able to pick from this broadcast, and please make sure you apply them. And, let, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, because in 2020, I'll be doing quite a number of broadcasts on YouTube instead of on Facebook. So please type in your comments. I've really been really, really pleased hosting you on this live broadcast. I don't know if you have any questions. Do we have questions? Do we have any questions? Please type in your questions. So I'm still typing in, thank you for joining me on this live broadcast. Thank you for joining me on this live broadcast. Okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you. So I would like to say um, goodbye now because I think I've, we've, we've um, had a good time today.
And I really, really appreciate you for, yeah, for joining me. I'm going to sign out now. Oh, more people are joining now. Wow, thank you so much. I'm actually honored. I'm sure quite a number of people forgot, or maybe they're actually in the Christmas mood as well. But thank you so much. Thank you. I really, really, really appreciate this. Thank you. So I'm signing out right now, and I would like you to recommend this YouTube channel to as many people as you can. The more we are, the merrier, so that we all learn from one another. So it's been me, Nancy Ekbezu, your favorite school administrator in the whole world, hosting you to what I enjoy doing, talking about school administration, various aspects of school administration. And today it's been on boarding house administration. There'll be several other topics. So watch out anytime I announce a broadcast, please join me eagerly and invite all your team members to join as well. Okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm signing out. <laughs>